What's up guys? Today we're gonna take a look at the Mori paint through tool and how we can deform paint onto the paint buffer and we start right now. Let's jump into the paint through tool now. So um, you can find it under the U if you hit the U button or you can simply just drag a, like an image into the view like this from your image manager and the paint through tool will pop up. Um, so the paint through tool is, is this one uh, in, the, in the toolbar. So it's under the eraser as default. So let's take a look at it. So we, we have a text here. Let's imagine we wanna paint some rock texture onto this. So with the paint through tool, you can, by shift, you can uh, push it around so you can place it. Uh, the control button rotates it. If you shift and control and just drag left and right on your screen with your Wacom, you will scale. So you have the tool, if you have the tool help enabled, you can see all the shortcuts up here in this bar. In the top um, menu here, you have some settings for the paint through tool or the tool settings for any if you have it enabled. So here's the the mode. That's that's something that we looked at in another video. That's more related to painting in general. But the th paint through here, uh, you have um, a button called stamp, and that just stamps that whole complete image into the paint buffer. Repeat, so if I scale this down, it will repeat. If you have a tileable texture, for in my case, let's make it even smaller. It will uh, tile the edges. Let's scale it up again. Tint, it tints with your color, uh, like it, yeah. Here's the fun part, the stencil. So this is the default. It just becomes how it is. If you set it to stencil, no stencil. Oop, that's Nala, my dog. Um, no um, stencil. Uh, so in my case now, I don't have any alpha on this. So it just becomes blue. It takes the color here. But if I would, um, take a proper stencil like a, uh, an image with a opacity. So this one is a PNG image with opacity. Uh, so now you see as it sets to stencil here, it will pick up the blue. I can change the color, take any other color. So now you see, now that's a stencil. What else do we have? If we set it to no stencil, it just becomes the the color that's in that stencil so it doesn't pick up the color i have there it's just gonna paint with the values from the actual stencil so maybe i want to do something like a cracked logo thing what else inverted stencil that's gonna be the opposite takes the opposite of the opacity Let's go back to a regular image here. So we have something called luminance. And this is this is something that you probably will use with more like a black and white approach. So if I would take this image and uh, into the paint buffer, the painting settings, grade this one. So I enable the grade. Let's reset this. You will probably just want to drive black and white values. So let's desaturate this, maybe contrast it. So now uh, if I start to paint, let's take another color. Take. It will only pick up the, um, the bright values here in the stencil. Let's zoom in. It will only pick up the bright values. That's yeah. So the opposite is the 
inverted luminance now it will just um, it will save all the, the white values yeah let's set it back to normal so that's something maybe when you do dirt masks or like scuffs and stuff you you level your images and make like take some of the regions that you when you start to look crisp and uh, nice you might might wanna use it as like breakup maps or anything if that makes sense so yeah that, that's a little about the paint through tool uh, reset image it resets it back to to to, to the normal so then you have the the pan it will uh, see that it kind of sticks to the image there or to the paint buffer scale lock if i zoom out now it's gonna maintain the the size kind of so you have the same size you can pan around it's gonna maintain the size because if I disable this, it's gonna see that it it's always the same size uh, regarding to the paint buffer. But if you set to scale, it's gonna scale. If you zoom out, it's gonna become smaller. So the actual size of the paint is gonna stay visually the same depending on your distance. If that makes sense. So yeah, that's the actual paint buffer. So we, let's take a look how, how we can deform paint next. So we want to deform some paint here now. So let's, let's get something into the paint buffer to deform first. So we have this stencil um, with some, some drooping stuff there. So we have a few deforming options here. We have the warp, the the slurp, the pinup. So um, let's let's take a look at those in in order here. So let's let's start with this one. If you have a live paint in the paint buffer, you can just drag out a a like a grid and start to. You have a few corners, so so it's like a grid warp. So this is something you can do you can if you hit the plus and minus so the plus inserts more so you get more fidelity in this uh, this one over here in the top menu so you can also the up and down arrow on your keyboard get more fidelity there pressing those toggle grid it just disables the grid but it's it's still there. It's active. You get the points. I guess it's a way to take away declutter if you think it's intrusive. Uh, so yeah, that that's one way. So if you hit uh, another tool or anything like a paint, it the actual deform goes away. So now it's deformed, but it's still in the buffer. So in my case, I don't uh, have like a, a automatic bake, so I can toggle around and that was in a previous chapter I went through that then you can continue with the slurp tool so um, we have a few options here let's start with the the rotate that's a strange thing take the pull let's go back a few steps let's take pull first so if I hit the R on my keyboard I get like a um, radius so you also have it here it's the radius of the actual tool so then you can fudge around paint like this if you wanna follow some maybe a line or something you can do that the grow that's like a bulge thing shrink it stops it it pinches pinch the, the paint down rotate it will start to rotate 
your paint erase it's gonna erase back to the original state so there's a few options for that it's the slurp tool and this one the pin up so if you hit you insert pins so with the you have the the help here so shift and click insert pins so this is more like com uh, defining like border of the actual uh, deformation so now you can start so you it, they act uh, like similar to like anchors kind of um so you can insert more if you wanna maybe make this border like save this and just deform that border so that's another another way of um, deforming paint after the fact have it live in the paint buffer reset pins clear pins shift that's a way to deform paint into the paint buffer Thanks for watching this episode from the Mori channel. Today we looked at uh, the paint through tool and how we can deform paint onto the paint buffer. If you like this and want to see more, just hit the subscribe button, double click that button and uh, give me comments and feedback and I will try and get back to you with uh, tips and new techniques. Bye bye.